They came, they saw, and they certainly conquered. On their sixth attempt, Banyana Banyana finally brought home the gold from the Women's African Cup of Nations, or WAFCON. It was an exhilarating moment for a team that's enjoyed little support from the sports governing body over the years, mainly for what it means for the future of the next generation of female stars. We are welcoming Banyana Banyana. When Banyana Banyana landed at Or Tambo after their historic victory at the Women's African Cup of Nations, South Africans took a break from the state of the nation to celebrate our African queens. Two successive Olympics, 2012 and 2016. Now, two successive World Cups. And finally, the gold medal. Thank you, Cecil. Thank you, Cecil. Thank you. Have you come down from the high? Uh, that you were on when you got back after winning? Not at all, not at all. Like when I think about it, I just have this broad smile on my face. Banyana Banyana have consistently reached the final since the Women's Africa Cup of Nations or WAFCON began in 1995. But in previous years, the trophy remained just out of reach. Team coach Desiree Ellis knew this time was going to be different. I made sure that I had some tissues in my pocket because I, I, I'm a very emotional person. I wear my heart on my sleeve. Knowing they had substantial support at home gave Desiree and the team that extra confidence boost to bring the trophy home. We knew when we walked out in that final that they might have 50,000, but we've got almost 60 million behind us. So we were not in any way phased and not afraid to take them on. Banyana Banyana won 2-1 against Morocco in their own backyard, Rabat, crowning their unbeaten record at this tournament. Still in awe about it, um, still get goosebumps and the first time winning it. So, you know, failure after failure equals excess for me. Janine van Veek, one of two Banyana Banyana captains, is South Africa's most capped soccer player. I couldn't stop taking that smile off of my face. My, my cheeks started hurting eventually. Um, and it was just amazing to see the support that came out to, to us. Um, and the support shown to women's football, that is something that we, we strive towards for many years. Worldwide support for women's football has exploded. In London's Wembley Stadium at the end of July, the UEFA Women's Euro 2022 final broke all attendance records for any European Championship final, indicating that things indeed are changing. A crowd of over 87,000 fans packed the stadium as an English national soccer team won its first major championship since 1966. Globally, we're celebrating the dawn of a new era for female football. After the euphoria has died down, the dust has settled and players have returned to their clubs in distant lands, what is the long-term impact on women's football in South Africa? I don't think we realise the magnitude of what we've done. We've changed the way people think, not just about women's football, but about women in sport. Women like Desiree have fought tooth and nail to be taken seriously at club and national levels. For Desiree, it started in the 70s. Back in the day, it wasn't the norm for a girl to play football. I was constantly told that I wanted to be a boy. All I wanted to do was play the sport that I loved, and I think what helped me was my parents' support. That support helped her overcome the prejudice she encountered. It didn't matter what the teacher said at school or what the neighbor said while I was playing with the boys. It didn't matter at all, even though I was threatened that they were going to send me to school bare feet because my sho school shoes were always broken. But my father was my biggest supporter, and I think I am where I am today because of him. Um, whatever I did was, was never good enough, so I tried to be better and be better all the time. Football was in, in my DNA from a very young age. I started playing with the boys at the age of six. It was very rare for girls to play football back then. And, you know, I received a lot of, um, you know, negative comments from the boys, from the boys' parents, on the oppositions, from my own teammates at, at times when they didn't want a girl on their team. For Janine, even finding a women's team was a battle. The first team she played for was in Guatemala Township, Springs. I was a swad girl going into an African community and, um, you know, 
a lot of people couldn't believe this white family coming into to their community and wanting to play football. Determination is what set these women apart. Desiree joined Banyana Banyana in the 90s and quickly rose to the captaincy. But it was a different time. It wasn't until 2009 that the pendulum started shifting. 13 years ago, there were barriers for women to advance in football. Sassol wanted to play a role and they were in it for the long haul. The company's decision to invest was based on their belief in inclusion. When you're making investment that's long term in development of young women and young girls uh, through sports, you've got to stay the long haul. Charlotte Mukwena, a leading force behind Sassol's partnership with Banyana Banyana. How do you measure the return on investment on something like this? This is not traditional brand uh, management uh, where you are looking at only the commercial um, outcome of it. It was not the investment intent. The investment intent was much bigger than that. It was the intent um, to make sure that we create a platform for young women to advance through sports. In 2018, Desiree was appointed as head coach for Banyana Banyana to lead the team through the WEFCON tournament. From the word go, I surrounded myself with experts. I'm, I'm still a baby in coaching. What a professional and what a leader. She's really dedicated to making sure that um, she brings out the best in the individuals and in the team. But applause and flying the flag are not enough. The success of Desiree and her team has again highlighted an issue some prefer not to talk about, pay disparity. Despite Bafana Bafana's disappointing record since winning AFCON in 1996, the men earn, on average, 10 times more than their female counterparts. Banyana Banyana's success has forced soccer bosses to commit to equal pay for equal work. What difference will it make in a player's life to get that equal pay? She doesn't have to work nine to five and then go to truck club training. She doesn't have to depend on anyone else. She can take care of herself and the family. Can you imagine if they were to do this full time? They, they, they'd then be able to concentrate solely on football and not worry about where the next meal is coming from or worry about are they going to get money to pay the rent. There is no full-time professional women's football league in South Africa, forcing players to make tough decisions. It's a struggle to actually make a living from playing a football, um, making a career out of football in South Africa. And many of us actually go abroad um, to be actually to get rewarded for what we do at the end of the day. It's amazing to see so many representing South Africa in different countries abroad. Recognizing the challenges facing young football players, Janine started the JVW Football Club in 2012. I identified so many young girls playing in the boys' leagues, at boys, uh, with the, at school level, and there was no opportunity for them. And I wanted to see and be the change of that. So I wanted to just create a platform for these girls to express the, their full potential and ability in the sport that they love. 14-year-old Tatiana Correa started playing football when she was three years old and joined the club about a year ago with big dreams for her future. I love soccer, so to become a professional, obviously, um, that would be amazing. I mean, playing in uh, the WAFCON or the Euros and FIFA World Cup, I mean, that's my dream. Over the 10 years, we've had players represent the junior and senior national team so far, and we're incredibly proud of what we've created. But just also to see the growth in the women's game over the past years has been incredible. 17-year-old Simone Souls, who has been with the JVW Football Club for six years, was this year called up to the Banyana Banyana squad trials. I didn't make the final squad. Hopefully next time I'll make the final squad. I mean, I'm still young, I still have a lot ahead of me. So it just pumps me up, you know, knowing that I've already trained with those players, I've been with those players, yeah. For young soccer stars, the future looks promising, but a future only likely to deliver on its promise if the game's top brass deliver on theirs. We definitely are seeing that uh, there is a wave of change. And you heard me when I was speaking, I did not say W AFCON, I just said AFCON. Mm -hmm. I did not say W FIFA, I just said FIFA, because that's where they play and that's how they need to be recognized. And that's what it's about. It's about the fact that we have to continue advance uh, equity and equality through sports and in sports. There's definitely no going back and that's why I'm so excited that 
Uh, we have qualified for the FIFA Women's World Cup once again. No matter who plays, we'll be sold out. And it's going to be an amazing atmosphere. And 2023 will be the start of the new evolution of women's football globally. And now we have that gold medal that no one can take away from us. Um, history makers that no one can take away from us. And I think that's what the players need to remember for the hard work they've put in.